Greetings, everybody. It is the Doctor. Time to continue Star Trek Online free to play on our Lieutenant Commander tactical character. Having a lot of fun with this game still, and uh, we are working through the Davidian storyline now, still under the Klingon War. Very, uh, still at the, pretty much the beginning of the game. Uh, we are level 15. Uh, obviously, the goes all the way up to uh, 60, so we have quite a ways to go. Quite a bit of missions left to do, and I want to get through this storyline. One thing that we have, I have done since the last video is I did sell everything in my inventory, as you can see. So I got a lot of energy credits uh, up to 23,000 right now. That's not a ton, but definitely um, more than none. <laughs> Also, I did something. Uh, I went to the exchange and I bought a Tribble for me and all of my bridge officers. So what is a Tribble and what does that do for you in-game? Well, these are devices, so they go in your device slots. And I picked one called a Triolic Tribble. These actually have passive powers for your character and your bridge officers. And uh, this specific one called a Triolic Tribble, it uh, does a plus 3.3 all energy, uh, all damage resistance rating for 3600 seconds. So for 3600 seconds, which is quite a long time, it will give you a 3.3 all energy or all damage resistance rating on your character. So that's just one way to kind of buff your character up a little bit more. And the great thing about Tribbles is it doesn't just do it for your character. If you put one on each of your bridge officers, they also can benefit from Tribbles. So you can find some good Tribbles with some good passive abilities, put them on your bridge officers, and they will use them. And then you can use one yourself. You just have to manually go and pet your Tribble on ground, and then the buff will be activated. And I'll show you how that works. The other thing is that I did equip the Phase Shifted Personal Shield Mark IV with Cap and Regen from the last mission. That way we are ready to go now for this mission. So we're all up to date and ready to go. Um, let's get the mission. We go to the Klingon War. You, you will see we are still under. We've got... Uh, where is it? Spin the Wheel. So Skirmish was the last one and now it's time for Spin the Wheel. A deep cover intelligence operative on Drozana Station needs your help. Nabo! I need your assistance with a rather delicate situation, Franklin Drake says. We have an intelligence operative undercover at Drozana. Her astute observations have given us the edge in several critical engagements in the neutral zone. 22 hours ago, this operative activated an emergency subspace beacon. Samara would only contact me in this manner if she was about to be discovered by the enemy or her life was in danger. I am understandably concerned. I need you to go to Drozana, find Zamara, and assist her. Take her to safety if you have to, but don't blow your cover. If you go in there, weapons blazing, you may get her killed. I've accessed your logs. It's been quite some time since you've had some shore leave. I suggest you visit Drozana for some quote, downtime. Go to Drozana and res and uh, respond to a request for assistance from an undercover intelligence operative. And we are going to get some cool ability things, some cool things here. Um, now the, the, your gut might tell you to go for like a warp core upgrade, you know, something like that. Of course, we know that as you continue to evolve in this game, uh, your mark number is just going to be increased anyway, so this is not going to be a top end stuff, you know, after level four. So we do see this unique item called a synchronic proton distortion prototype assault rifle. This sounds like the way to go, and in fact, it will be because it's a weapon that's going to help us fight the Davidians in later missions here. Also, it's auto leveling, so it kind of levels along with you. No matter what level you are, it will continue to be that. Power, as powerful as whatever level you are. And you know that because it doesn't have a mark number attached to it. So we'll talk about that more when we get uh, to pick that up at the end of this mission. Okay, we are at Drazana. Spin the wheel. Welcome to Drozana. 
You are cleared for docking. We have everything you'll need for shore leave and a few things that you didn't even know you wanted. Shopping, drinking, dining, entertainment. You'll find it here. And don't forget the 77th rule of acquisition. If you break it, I'll charge you for it. Sounds just like a Ferengi. Okay. Not sure where we should start, but intelligence shows that Balan is the Ferengi to talk to if you're looking for information. He's a bartender, so we should look for him in the lounge area. So now that we're on ground, you will see that I now have this Tribble in my hotbar. It's called a Pet Tribble. This is the one I was talking about, plus 3.3 .3 all damage resistance rating for 3600 seconds. So I've already activated it, and you can see it shows a Triolic damage resistance buff now uh, under my character. But you can hit it again. The time... I just did it a couple of minutes ago, so I can do it again, and you'll see it'll, re it'll reset. So you get an hour, for an hour, you get that uh, plus 3.3 .3 damage resistance on myself. That's all you gotta do. You can pet it any time, and it'll reset the clock. Nice little triolic triple there. And uh, for my bridge officers, uh, when they pop up in whatever mission that they are needed in, they will pet the Tribble as well and use it. So it benefits everybody. Okay, this is select your ship, not what we need. We need to question Balan. Berlin. Balan? Balan. You're a Ferengi, but you're not the one I need. Drazan is a pretty cool station. If you've never been to it before, I recommend going and checking out all the vendors here. You will find stuff you need like commodity vendors, but this is this vendor over here is going to be one that's that will be um, highly sought after, and that's the low buy crystal consortium. This one is where you spend your low buys that you get to buy really cool stuff like starships. You can buy you know some really really cool starships here and space gear, ground gear. We're not going to go through through everything now. That's a whole entire different video, but um, yeah, you want to check out Drazana because there's cool stuff here. Got a tailor. Um, I need to find Balin. I do not know. I think he's a bartender. Yeah, here we go. Welcome to Drozana, the home of the finest libations and pleasures at this side of Rick's. Care to hear about today's specials? Um, no, actually, I'm looking for someone. Aren't we all? Me, I want a leggy Vulcan with a liberal attitude towards interspecies relations. So are you looking for someone in particular or just some company? Her name is Zamara. Do you know her? Oh yeah, I know Zamara. Maybe she's been here recently and maybe she hasn't. My memory's kind of hazy. <laughs> okay, so we got some options here. We can do tell me where Zamara is or I'll snap your spine. That's a uh, Klingon response right there if I ever saw one. Perhaps we should come to some sort of arrangement, or it is imperative that I find Zamara. You need to tell me what you know. Well, I think perhaps we should come to some sort of arrangement. Yeah, I'm sure we can. In fact, I feel my memory clearing up already. I tell you what, I know you Starfleet types aren't big on Latinum, but what you do have are skills and willingness to get your hands dirty. That's what I need right now. Our replicators are on the fritz. Maybe it's the whole power system, because the lights are going wonky too. But a little blue mood lighting isn't as big of a problem for me as unfilled drink orders. Go to the cargo bay and get my replicators working. By the time you're done, I'm sure I will have remembered where I last saw Zamara. Alright, I need to go to the cargo bay and scan the station's replicators. Great. Okay, so... Okay, so... Uh, where would that be, cargo bay? It is not this glowing thing, nor is it that glowing thing, and it's not these glowing things. I guess it's this way. Through here, perhaps? Not even. What? Oh, back here. Aha, here we go. Okay, so I remember this one. Problem is, I don't remember the orders that I need to do this in. So while I've done this a bajillion times, I really don't remember the order, the correct order off the top of my head. So a little bit of back and forth we will have to do. All right, scan station replicators. Input requests, run diagnostic. 
action and available replicators are offline due to diminished function of electroplasma distribution network. So basically, if you don't like reading a lot of dialogue, you, you can, you're definitely welcome to skip through this, but this little puzzle here is a huge thing about on dialogue. You have to read all this stuff to uh, understand what's going on and then figure out which ones you need to hit first because some things are shared and some things aren't even needed. 30% drop in power reported on deck one. Replicators are offline until power fluctuations are repaired. Um, power must be rerouted through systems to relieve strain on EPS. The following systems are available for this process. Hollow suites, gravity control, replicators, environmental controls, and defense grid. Six connections are required to stabilize the power grid. Cause of power loss is unknown. Captain, the biggest problem you're going to have repairing anything on that station is the age of the system and the general lack of maintenance. Jorzana was built in the mid-23rd century, and many of the systems on the station haven't had a major update in more than a century. So you're dealing with an EPS system that just can't handle the strain of running modern equipment like replicators. I did some digging in our database and found a log made by Starfleet Corps of Engineer officer who visited the station in the early 24th century and made repairs to the EPS system. The log says that you need to regulate the power flow by routing it through various subsystems. It's almost like you're using those systems as ancient circuit breakers. The first thing you should try is scanning some of the damaged systems and power couplings in the cargo bay. You should learn more about how to properly realign the arrays. So you gotta scan these now. Okay, scan replicator power relays. The Ferengi have made replicator function their top priority. The replicators are now tied into every available system, including life support. Start with a connection to the replicators or the power connection will fail. Okay, scan power connection network. When you find a snarl of wires and cables that look like they have been chewed by voles, you realize that not every system uh, may need to be used to make a successful reroute. Some systems may need more than one connection. Okay, so we will come back to here. We need to scan everything first and then we'll come back and start routing. It looks like someone used an outdated power coupling to connect gravity control to the main power feed. If it must have been an emergency fix, but it's been here so long that the coupling is fused and cannot be removed. Gravity control cannot connect to environmental control and the defense grid, but not replicators. Okay, we'll come back to you. We gotta scan all eight before we can actually start routing. The hollow suites have a separate environmental control system so that they can be finely tuned for temperature conditions appropriate to the various scenarios that are running at any given time. Environmental controls cannot connect to hollow suites. Milan found a way to keep the station's ancient bar coolers working by connecting the cooling systems to the replicators. Unless that connection is maintained, all of the refrigeration units will go offline. Replicators must have a connection to environmental controls. Okay. See how this is starting to work. Things must connect to other things. Things can't connect to other things. The EPS relays on the station are a maze of stunts and relays with patches going between unrelated systems and even to power cells that are being used to boost flow in critical areas. Six connections are required to stabilize the power grid. Let's look at the defense grid. The Klingons who ran the station in the early 24th century made significant improvements to the station's shields and added turret weapons. While it made the station more defensible, it also increased the amount of energy needed to keep the station's defense grid operational. The fourth connection must be to the defense grid. Okay, so the fourth connection has to be here, no matter what. Okay, let's see what this does. There is a shunt that is slowly diverting energy from the station's power core to hollow emitters installed in some of the lower levels of the station. You'll need to compensate for that energy drain to restore a particular function. The connection must end with the system to which you are attempting to restore power. So we know that from that the beginning must be replicators, the end must be replicators, and the fourth one, fourth connection must be the defense grid. And then something can't connect to something and something and something something something. Okay, let's see. 
Ooh, if I can do this. Okay, first power transfer successful. That is good. I think we ignore hollow sweets. Let's try gravity control. No, that was a failure. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Replicator. Environmentals. Yes, that's successful. Then gravity. Ah, that is successful. And then the fourth one must be. Must it must be the defense grid? Okay. Then we come back, and I think we now have to go back to the environmentals. <gasps> yes, and then back end with replicators. Yes, it worked. A little reading helps. Okay, good. That is how it's done, folks. Yeah, that can be really confusing. I hate that puzzle sometimes. All right. Back to Balan. Welcome to Drazana. Um, yes. Let's see. Your replicators. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Your replicators are working. They are, and I am exceedingly pleased by your generous offer to repair them for no compensation. I can't let you go away empty handed, though. How about I give you a 15% discount on drinks and souvenirs for an amount of time to be determined by management? We had a deal below on the replicators for information about Samara. Fine, a deal's a deal, right? Never let it be said that I'll cheat a valued customer like yourself. Personally, I don't know why you're so interested in her. She's a looker, but just try talking to her and she's more paranoid than Obsidian Order agent in a room full of tall Shi'ar. Samara usually hangs out near the Davo tables. Keep an eye out for a looker wearing purple. You can't miss her. Find Zamara. I'm guessing is this purple person over here that we are supposed to find. Yep, that is correct. I like her eyes. <laughs> Zamara. <laughs> her eyes are very purplish. They look like Christmas ornaments. Be careful. They're watching. Uh, they who? Shh, keep your voice down. I'm being watched. I've seen too, too many familiar faces in the crowd. And there are shadows. Watchers in the dark. I see them out of the corner of my eye when they think I'm not looking, but I'm always looking. When the lights change, they are there. I was sent to help you. You weren't sent to help me, you were sent to watch me. Drake needs me to keep finding information to Starfleet Intelligence, feeding information to Starfleet Intelligence. The Klingons come here and they drink and they talk. It's amazing the bits of information you can pick up around a Dabo table. Everything, even the smallest detail is important. Captain Gerard was in here last week. He ordered blood wine, an entire bottle of the 2309 vintage to be exact. That business with the House of Torg must have upset him more than we knew. When Gerard's not happy, he's drink he drinks Warnog. Tell me more about what happened with the House of Torg, because we're not playing the Klingon side. We don't know much about what's going on on the Klingon side. Torg was uh, on the High Council until he made a play to destroy the House of Martok. He was partially successful. Maven, son of Drax, is dead. The house has no heir unless Drex takes a new mate and fathers a new son. But Martok's widow was wise. Her son Drex was off fighting in the war, so Lady Sorella called in KDF officers to defend her house. They exposed Torg's treachery and Jumpok was forced to discommodate him. As to why that would make Gerard unhappy, Torg raised Gerard after his mother died. Now he is an outcast and his house has fallen. Gerard cannot speak to him without losing his own honor. Interesting. All right, what can I do to help you? Find out who is watching me. I'm not safe here. The Klingons are looking for me. They know someone has been feeding intelligence to Starfleet. The ghosts are always watching. Their eyes are hungry. Yesterday, they surrounded a drunken Klingon. Now he's dead. They will find me when the blue light shines, and then I'll disappear. I know what the ghosts are. How could you know that? You may think you know. You may even have readings in your tricorder that you think are right. But you don't know. How could you know? I'm here every day. They watch me and I watch them. Well, I can take you someplace safe. She's really paranoid. No, they're everywhere. They're watching. You've been here too long. Someone will notice that we're together. Go do something else. Play Dabo. I'll contact you when I'm ready. When it's safe. Play Dabo and wait for Zamara's signal. Okay. So she... I just gotta go over here and play some Dabo. Uh, I don't want to play a Ferengi, I want to play a Dabo. Oh, 
I have to click the button. Play Dabo. Spin the wheel and win. Spin the wheel and win. Okay, let's play some Dabo. I'm not very good at this, but uh, let's bet 100. Uh, yes, I know. Bets must be between that. I'm trying to type that. Why won't you let me type that? There we go. 100. We're going to put on slot 0. Let's do another. So let's do slot 8. And then let's do slot like 14. Place bet. Let's see what happens. Waiting, 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 waiting. Yes! You didn't win any gold press latinum. Oh, I did. I won 20 gold press latinum in one slot. Okay. Was that uh, close enough? I couldn't wait for you to get that lucky. We would have been here all night. Zamara wants me to give you a message. Oh, this is Hollow Lita speaking to me. She wants you to know if you're interested in finding out what's really going on here at Drizana Station, you need to check out the lower levels. I have an access code for you that will get you past the security doors. If you want to talk to her again, I suggest you collect your winnings and catch her before she leaves. Yeah. Cool, so I got 20 GPLs now. Gold press latinums. Okay, let's talk to Zamara again. You don't need to worry about me. I'm going to leave this place to the ghosts. They seem to, to belong here more than we do. I've booked passage on a ship. You don't need to know which one. Just tell Drake that he'll keep getting his intel one way or another. Good luck, Romy Summers. You're going to need it. Captain, there were Davidians in the Donatu system. Now you found evidence of them again on Drozana Station. Obviously, they're using the neutral zone as some sort of feeding ground. And that puts dozens of worlds at risk. I've requested sensor data from ships closest to the comet's current location for analysis, but that is only half of our problem. If properties of the comet are somehow easing the Davidians' entry into this area of space, how do we stop them? Recommendations? The closest research facility is on Deep Space K7. I recommend that we consult with the team there. Consult Lieutenant Kalapo on Deep Space K7. Kalapo can be found in the lab area. Now we gotta go to K7. K7 is a very cool space station. Was uh, shown in the original Star Trek series. They've updated it for the game, so it looks a little different on the inside. Okay, K7 over here. Not very far away from where we are. So it sounds like the Davidians are not only on that other planet, Donatu, but they're also here at Drazana Station and uh, definitely causing problems in this whole area. Whatever they're up to. So here comes K7. You'll recognize the exterior of it from the original series. It looks very similar. Obviously, the exterior wouldn't have changed too much, I guess, but uh, it's cool that they kept the same design and everything for it. So it's kind of iconic. It's really neat. Isn't that cool? Deep Space K7. Okay, dock at K7. We need to go to the lab. Which is, I don't know where. It's in the club. I guess it is. It's a door in the club, which is a weird place for a lab, but all right. Here we go. And here's a Kalapo. If you've ever wondered what a Kalapo looks like, that's it. How can I help you? Well, first, tell me about yourself, Kalapo. 
I grew up on trading ships making supply runs in the Bolian sector. It was exciting, but it was crazy too. I never knew where I was going to be or if my parents were going to have enough latinum to keep the ship flying. Then there was that time with the Orion Pirates, and let's just say it wasn't the best environment for a child. All I've ever wanted was stability. I used to envy the kids on the colony worlds we served. For a while, I even thought about becoming a farmer. I wanted to wake up at the same time every day, go to the same job every day, and even eat the same food most days. I like working on a starbase. It has a little bit of unpredictability, but every night my quarters are there waiting for me, and they're always in the same place. Do you know Franklin Drink? Drink. I always call him Drink. I had dealings with him in the past. I think he's some sort of military strategist. He visits here from time to time, although Commander Wildman is never too thrilled to see him. He's always treated me well, though, so I don't have any reason to dislike him. What has Franklin Drake asked you to do? Mostly he wants updates on our research projects. Last week he was asking me all sorts of questions about the Synchronic Distortion Prototype Rifle. We work with prototypes of new equipment here. I'll bang on something for months to find out if it's advantageous and problems before it is sent to the field to be used by Starfleet. Even then, it takes years of more testing and uh, iteration before something becomes standard fleet issue, and most equipment never makes it that far. There are hundreds of inventions that just don't work, or they don't work the way we want them to. Those failures are then broken down and their components are recycled. We have to keep everything secure. If the Rymelins or Klingons got their hands on what we are working on here, they could learn a lot about our technology. Tell me more about these, this uh, Synchronic Distortion Prototype Rifle. That was a complete disaster. The basic design came out of Memory Alpha, and it was intended to detect and damage cloaked opponents. Someone there got an idea that the Rymelins were developing personal cloaking devices, even though the power needs of something like that would be incredible. I recommended against sending it to a field testing, but it went anyway. The crew on the USS DeWitt had some luck in modifying one for use as a hand weapon, but their prototype was destroyed when the ship was lost in the neutral zone. I hadn't thought about it again until Drake asked about it. Well, there are Davidians in the neutral zone. So that explains why Drake was interested in the prototype. It was a complete failure at detecting polarization cloaks, but if I added a phase modulator and reversed the polarity, oh, Doctor Who. Those modifications should be no problem, Rami Summers, and when I'm done, this beam will pack quite a punch against phase-shifted Davidians. I'll forward the weapon on to Drake as soon as I'm done. Be careful, the Davidians won't stop. I'm afraid we will have to, we will have to be ready to fight. Well, he sure changed his mood quickly. So I'm going to get this uh, prototype weapon. Captain, we've done what we can for Zamara and have the information we need about the Davidians and Lieutenant Kalapo is working on a weapon we can use to fight them. As Excuse me. I suggest we report back to Drake and see what he has to say. He's never very forthcoming with his information, but the more we know about him and his operations, the more we'll learn about Section 31. Are you ready to leave the system now? Report to Drake. Yeah, they kind of slipped that in there. Drake is part of Section 31. They don't really make it too clear until just right now, but it kind of they, then they just kind of throw it in your face with no explanation. But yeah, Drake is part of uh, Section 31. So that is uh, something to keep in mind about him. It's actually a pretty big plot point, but um, they just kind of throw it in your face here at the very end. Uh, not now. Report to neutral zone contact. So basically we are finished now with this mission. Good work. Zamara may think she has slipped my noose, but I have ways of keeping tabs on her. I take special care to know all about people in whom I have an interest. But you already know that, don't you, Rummy Summers? The ghosts that, th that Zamara mentioned concern me, however. You already encountered Davidians once. It's likely that they are on Drozana Station as well, and I won't let them use Federation citizens as food. Lieutenant Kalapo has completed work on the Synchronic Distortion Prototype Rifle. It should help you when you're ready to enter the lower levels of Drozana. Drake out, drops Mike. Okay, so let's pick up the Synchronic Prototon, Proton Distortion Rifle. It would be nice to have an upgraded warp core and all that stuff, but this is what's going to serve us right now in the missions to come. That other stuff I can always upgrade later, plus when I hit Commander, Mark IV is going, going to be obsolete anyway. So, makes sense to get the Synchronic Proton Distortion Prototype Assault Rifle. Whew, it's hard to say all that fast. Uh, anyway, and because, as I said, it does not have mark numbers on it, it is an auto-leveling weapon, so as I go to level 16, 17, 18, 19, all the way up to 60, 
it will go with me. <laughs> It'll auto level with me and be the, the, the level power that I need it to be at whatever level I am. So I don't have to ever upgrade it. So that puts us now at Lieutenant Commander 16, as you can see. We have now hit 16 and are actually getting close to 17 already. Uh, very big, very big increase there with uh, finishing that mission. So let's look at this weapon here. This is an this does anti-proton damage. Uh, not a lot of DPS right now because we are you know only level uh, 16, but. This will be good against the Davidians, apparently. It has a chained proton damage secondary attack. A prototype weapon originally developed at Memory Alpha to damage cloaked opponents. The synchronic proton distortion beam failed Starfleet field testing at Deep Space K7, and the project was abandoned. It was later successfully tested as a hand weapon against non-cloaked oppo opponents by crew from the USS DeWitt, but never entered production as a fleet weapon. Only a few prototypes of this weapon still exist, and this one has has been modified with a secondary effect that is extremely effective against foes who are at a subspace variance from our reality. This weapon stops improving when you reach level 50. Oh, okay, so there we go. It actually doesn't go to 60, my bad. It goes to level 50 and then it stops improving. Use tech upgrades to improve this weapon beyond that level. So that's good to know. I didn't know that. Now you learn something and I learn something. So uh, we will definitely use this against the Davidians. Uh, I will take this Mark II weapon out, put a Synchronic Distortion Rifle, and now we are ready for the next mission. So this one was just a bunch of dialogues, a puzzle, some Dabo talking, just getting things situated for the next mission. Uh, kind of boring. Uh, I, I thought that originally when I played this mission too, and I guess it still is. It's kind of a boring episode. Not a lot happens. You basically are just trying to get through it so you can get that Synchronic distortion rifle well i hope you all enjoyed that stay tuned for the next one we are going to go beneath the levels of drozana and uh, that should be quite fun thanks for watching stay tuned for the next one